Good morning. <laughs> He's on mute right now, y'all. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I had to unmute. Sorry, okay. sorry about that. Um, Deshaun, um, the last couple of days, your coaches have talked about what a vocal player you are and what a vocal player you've always been. Does, does that go back a long way with you? Where, where does that sort of confidence that we see on the field come from? Uh, preparation. Um, I've always turned myself to be in my book, work hard. Then I came here being able to be around guys who work hard and establishing that uh, leadership that Ch I've been following from Chuck and uh, the leadership that my coaches bring and also just my teammates and all my teammates, they play hard. So they, they when they play hard, maybe want to be more in my book. And if I'm more in my book, I can be more confident in myself. So that's, that's pretty much where I get it from. Hey Deshaun. hey, Deshaun. Who's going to go first? <laughs> hey, Deshaun. Pete Gilbert here with WBAL. Um, the last couple of days, you being a Texas guy, Earl being a Texas guy, did that was that harder to watch to kind of go through this uh, and, and make it more personal for you? I mean, since being hurt the last two years, I kind of just realized the NFL is a business. And I trust and believe in what, in what Coach Harbaugh and the people upstairs are doing. So, honestly, what happens here – Besides me being on the field and me doing doing things that I can control, I can't really take it in any, any kind of way because the NFL is a business, so it is what it is. What's up, Deshaun? Kirk McKeown from 98 Rock. How you doing? What's up, boys? Six games um, in two seasons. Yeah. The best ability is availability. People talk about you not being on the field. For sure. What do you say to that? Look, uh, I think I got myself together physically and mentally and spiritually. I feel like God's going to bless me with the things. I need to stay healthy this year, and I'm going to do, do the best as I can to stay healthy for my teammates and play for them. I love this team. I love my defense. I'm just trying to stay healthy as much as I can so I can be able to make the plays I need to make to get us to where we're trying to get to in our uh, end goal. So I'm trying to play for my boys. What's it like working with Chuck Clark? How's your relationship with him? Uh, well, Chuck was here a year before me when I came in. We were both kind of sitting sitting behind two great players, Tony and Waddle. So, like, when I came in, he just kind of, like, I, Waddle and, and Tony was more of my mentors, but Chuck was there to help me and guide me all along. Like, any any struggles I had mentally with the playbook or me, see, I wasn't used to not sitting behind nobody. So, he was so he was already here and was experiencing it, and I was kind of like asking him, how does it work? And I kind of just learned how to grow from him. But then sitting back and watching his success and watching how hard he worked, and just being being able to see the greatness that he, the path that he's about to start, I just want to be a part of that. And honestly, Chuck's my dog. Like I ride for Chuck. Win or lose, I always ride for Chuck. Hey Deshaun, this is Garrett with the Ravens. Uh, could you talk about you know Coach Harbaugh said yesterday that it's it's your time now. Could you talk about how eager you are to get out there and play and, and show what you're able to do after the first you know after you know struggling to get on the field the first two years. Of course, I'm excited. I love the game of football. Will they pay me or not? Will I'll play this game. And my health has only been the only question I have from 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 everybody. I'm not worried about my health because I'm, I'm gonna be healthy. I'm gonna be 100. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do what I have to do to be productive for this team every game, every day. I'm, I'm gonna work my ass off. Excuse my language, but I'm, I'm gonna work my butt off. And I'm just trying to be here to win with my homies, with my brothers, man. That's all I care about. I don't care about nothing else. I don't care about what people say about me. I start this building. The only people's opinions I care about are my teammates and my coaches. The only people I care about. I'm Jimena Lugo La Torre from Ravens Spanish Radio. Adishan, uh, what is it like to practice against our team quarterbacks? Lamar well, Jackson is like that. He the man. I don't. See, I don't see if he if he doesn't win MVP, MVP two times in a, two times in a row. I'd be shocked. That boy is like that. And being able to play against him it just helps us build as a defense. Because we will never play against anybody like him ever, no matter what game it is. So being able to play against him. Makes us better every day. I know they're they're striving every day. We just uh, um, knives sharp, sharpening knives. We're going against each other. So we're trying to be great. Deshaun, it's Ryan Mink from Ravens Media. Can you talk a little bit about kind of your nose for the football, your your desire to make plays, make big hits, make get turnovers like you did in college, and and whether the Joker nickname kind of plays into that? Um, yeah, I mean, making plays is what I want to do. You know. As long as you fly around to the football and, and be in the right spots and don't try to force anything, the plays will come to you. And I ha I've learned that being in the NFL. And honestly, I mean, hey, if it happens, it happens. I feel like it's going to happen for me a lot. 
Um, me translating my games to the league, I mean, honestly, it's the same thing. It's just me just working hard. If you, you be consistent and work hard, eventually the hard work will pay off. Um, my Joker moniker, I mean, yeah, you never know what will happen with me. Just like the Joker, you never know what's going to happen. But, hey, we both going to come crazy. We both going to come wild. We're going gonna to handle, handle our business no matter what. Deshaun, it's uh, Jerry Coleman from over at 105.7 The Fan. Uh, I think it was Coach Hewitt yesterday who said that at times maybe you're a bit overconfident. Uh, is that an accurate description, perhaps? I wouldn't say overconfidence. I feel like um, being confident in your abilities strives, and it, come, it comes from just being able to know that you prepare the right way. If you're, if you're preparing the right way, then you're going to be confident in yourself. And I've been preparing for a starter, uh, as a starter for two years. And so I know what I can do, and I know what I can bring to this team to help my teammates be be great. And they they expect me to be great, and I I, I, I love that they uh, expect me to be great. And honestly, shoot, hey, if, if he's saying he's overconfidence, I'm gonna prove I'm gonna prove to everybody out there that I, my my confidence is very worthy of it for sure. Um, hey, Deshaun, Sean, this is Charles with the Baltimore Sun again. Um, you mentioned that Weddle and Tony were kind of your were kind of your mentors. Um. What would you say was the best guidance or wisdom that you took from those two guys? From uh, Dub, it was honestly just being in that book. You know, he was a master when it comes to play, but he knew exactly what was going to go on every play during the game. He could tell everybody what to do on their assignments, and I strive to be that great. I, I strive to be that, that that mentally tough. I strive to be that smart in this game of football because not just about running around. Because after after six or seven years, your ability will change. It's going to be more about mentally. So that's what I want to be able to translates to my game to help me make plays with my physical ability. And then TJ, he just, he just brought that dog. And I already had the dog, but he, he brought that West Coast dog. So it, it taught me how to be even more of a dog. So, hey, we're trying to bring all that to the field. Me and my dog, me, me and all the boys on defense, we're going to go crazy. Hey, Deshaun, this is Sean Stepner from WMAR ABC Baltimore. You mentioned coming up with Chuck Clark. When I'm wondering, when – you know, two guys at your position, you guys both have to wait your turn. You both have to uh, be patient. And then to get the opportunities almost kind of coincide together at the same time. W what is there to be said about that? Um, does that add maybe a level of chemistry between you and Chuck um, or something a little extra? I mean, first off, it's all God, you know. Um, when I was younger, I had to learn how to be patient. I ain't no patience when I first came to the league. I was always go, 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 you know what I'm saying? So being able to learn that patience and realizing, like, hey, when your time comes, you got to take advantage of it and take the opportunity and run with it. And I learned that from Chuck sitting back watching him when TJ went down last year and then I went down last year. Chuck stepped up and he did the things he needed to do to be a great player and to be consistent. And that's how it really is. I mean, for me and him both to be able to find be on a big stage together, we're going to make some big, we're going to make some noise out there. I, I trust him. He trusts me. We love each other, so I know we're going to play for each other, and we ain't let each other down. And Sean, I'm trying to make with Ravens to me again. Could you talk a, bit, a little bit about how difficult that was last year when it looked like, hey, you, you were finally going to have that expanded role on defense, and then the first game you suffered the knee injury. And, th and then second part, would it be fair to say, I mean, everybody's talking about how you replace Earl Thomas, who's a potential – you know, future Hall of Famer, but is your belief that, hey, I can make this defense even better even though I'm stepping in behind him? I mean, uh, injuries happen. I mean, it was it's football. Injuries always going to happen. Uh, it definitely hurt me, but it made me tougher, made me more mature, made me look at the game differently on the, on the mental aspect of it. Uh, in the Earl situation, I mean, hey, Earl, the Hall of Famer, no doubt. Uh, we have the same agent, so... I, of course, I, I respect Earl and his game, but I'm not worried about Earl. I'm worried about me or what, what, what I can bring to this team for my teammates. And I know I'm, I know I'm make my plays. I know we're gonna be we're gonna try to be great. So whatever, whatever I got to do to do that, that's what's gonna happen. Whether it's eight picks, ten picks, or no picks, whatever I got to do to help my team be great and win every game we, we need to win to accomplish our end goal. So I care about. Sean, we appreciate you taking your time to speak with us today. Thank you so much. For sure. Man. God bless. Y'all have a great day. We'll send everyone to our break card room. We'll be right back with our next availability. Appreciate y'all.